is popping people and welcome back to another tattoo tips video but before we start this video can we all just appreciate the pink or rather salmon jumper that i am wearing today because you know pink makes the girls wink so they say so i hope you're winking ladies I hope you are winking. If you are new around here, please subscribe to the channel. If you do not find this video helpful, I am sure, I am positive, I 110% know that you will find something in my tattoo tips playlist that you can go and peruse that will be worth your subscription. Anyway guys, last video I asked for 1 million likes. Unfortunately, we did not receive those 1 million likes, and this is unacceptable. So, I'm asking for 1 million likes on this video. Because we are the single greatest tattoo tips channel on YouTube. Anyway, today's video is going to be on the four rules that I use to compose a tattoo sleeve. The things that I think about when I am putting a sleeve together. Now I must point out, I must point out, this is not all the rules that I use, this is just some of the rules and the rules to get you started. And let me also just point out that there is a million other artists and a million other ways that you could put a sleeve together. This is just my way and the rules that I stick to. So, if you find this video helpful, again, we have a million likes to achieve. So press the like button. Right guys, and now we are off to the races with rule number one. Rule number one being theme. When it comes to building a sleeve, I always try to stick with the same theme running throughout. If somebody wants a Greek god sleeve, then I would do that entire sleeve based around Greek gods. If somebody wants a rose and lion sleeve, then I would do things based around that go with roses and lions. If somebody wants a wildlife sleeve, then obviously stick to wildlife and everything that goes with wildlife. I mean, Rule number one pretty much goes without saying, the better sleeve is going to be a full theme of one certain thing. What you don't want to be doing is doing a Greek god like mythical sleeve on top and then on the bottom going and doing, I don't know, like My Little Pony or something. However, what you can do is you can mix styles that complement each other. For example, realism, I happen to love dot work and geometric work. I think those two complement realism so, so well. Realism and dot work geometrical stuff go together like peanut butter and jelly for all you Americans out there. We just call it jam and peanut butter, but you get it. They go together. Now, sometimes a client will come to you and they don't want a a theme running throughout the sleeve. They just want like a mixed bag of things. Now, when it comes to sleeves like this, the sleeve isn't going to be the best. It's not going to be the best, but you can make it the best that you possibly can. Now to do this, what I would do is I would find out everything that the client wants put in into that sleeve and find out what doesn't need putting into that sleeve. You know, speak to the client, tell them that you know, you've got this certain thing and you've got this certain thing, but those two don't go together very well. Which one of those two is more important to you? You know, you've got to speak to your client and you've got to find out these things. And then once you've found those out and you have a list of everything that that client wants in that sleeve that needs to be in that sleeve and you've discarded the rest, then comes your artistic license to put something together 
that represents the very thing that they want. And then what you can do, say that client wants a book. Say, say that client loves reading. And reading is such a significant thing in their life. What you could do is, for example, create a piece of art that is a book, but then it's also got some flowers around it, for example. And then maybe they want something else that doesn't go with a book. But what you can do is you can take those flowers that you've used on that book and you can run that throughout that entire piece, creating that running theme. You know, sometimes it's not always possible, but where you can, I would always try to create a running theme throughout the entire sleeve. On to rule number two. Now, when it comes to the arm and creating a sleeve, what I like to do is break the arm down into four sections. That being the inner forearm, the outer forearm, shoulder to elbow, and inner bicep. For doing any type of realism work, these are the flattest areas of the arm that offer the most space. So if you're doing pocket watches or anything circular or round, you've got a nice flat area to work with. Same with faces if you were doing any portraits. Now, like I said, this gives the most space and the most area to work with and the flattest areas so you are not distorting any images. Now, sometimes the client will come in and they'll want to start a sleeve and they'll want to start with a piece on the top of their arm. Now, depending on what that piece is, you can get away with this. However, I would never realistically like to do something on the top of the forearm. Now, what happens is the tattoo wraps quite a lot, but not only that, what also happens is you take up real estate, give you less space to work with, on the back of the forearm, you'd have like a small gap that went down. Whereas obviously if you did the back forearm like this, you have a lot more space and you have a lot more space on the front. So it's really about maximizing the amount of space also that you have to work with. I hope that makes sense. Like I really do hope that makes sense. It's, sometimes I find it a little bit difficult to explain the way that I want to explain that makes sense in my head. So I really hope that that makes perfect sense to you. But just to like reiterate, if you go on top of the arm, it will wrap around and it'll leave less space on the underside of the arm to work with, rather than if you did this side and then this side. Now, obviously this is style based and going back to dot work and geometric work, the rules are different. Like you could wrap as much as you want with that type of work and it's not going to make a difference because the pattern or thing that you are doing is continuous. So different styles cater to different ways of doing things. With dot work and with geometric work, you can follow the, the natural S curve that the, that the arms got and it'll look just fine. Which takes me on to rule number three, which is S curves and composition of the sleeve. So what is an S curve? Well, an S curve is the natural movement that your wrist makes. So if I was to hold my wrist up like this, when I do this, as you can see, it twists, giving that S curve on the arm. Now the arm naturally has the S curve. So there's nothing that you can do about any sort of distortion that comes from the S curve. Now, when you put a piece on top of the forearm and on the back of the forearm, that S curve is gonna be prominent. So when they turn their wrist or when they turn their arm, they are gonna get some natural distortion. There's nothing you can really do about that. Now, going back to what I previously said about putting a piece on top of the on top of the forearm, that does sit naturally. It, it does, it sits more natural on the top of the forearm. So when your arm is down by your side, it does sit more natural. But because the forearm is flatter, and you do have more space, same with the back. For me, I would rather have the slight distortion on when the wrist moves than having it sit naturally with less space and distortion on the actual image rather than just distortion when your wrist or arm is moving. But you know what? It is all just personal preference. For me, the pros outweigh the cons on the S curve rather than uh, the placement on the top of the forearm. Now guys, onto composition. 
you need to be thinking about your sleeve as a whole. In your consultations with your clients, you need to be finding out everything. And while you are talking to them, you need to be putting the composition together in your head. So you have the visual representation ready to go on how you want to do something. A lot of the times a sleeve is put together with the main parts and then just gap fillers. And sometimes to fill these gaps, artists will just take anything that will fit in and bang it in. But what it does is it takes away from the composition of the piece and the, the layout of the piece and how that piece looks aesthetically. Is it pleasing to the eye? Individually, the piece will be good, but we're not on about individually. We're on about the piece as a whole, the sleeve as a whole. So you need to be thinking about what you are gonna do at every single stage. Every single design that you put together needs to fit with the next. So what you have then is a seamless transition from one tattoo into the next. For example, if you start something on the top of the arm, say you have a woman's face and you have some foliage down the bottom. When it comes to doing the back of the forearm, take that foliage from the bottom of that tattoo into the top of the next tattoo. You know, you shouldn't be able to tell where the sleeve started and where it finished. Everything should seamlessly blend together. And my battery just died. So we are on to rule number four. I am always, always thinking two or three steps ahead. Now that means that I do not cap off at the wrist or at the shoulder. Now, a lot of artists tend to cap off at the wrist and they do like a line that comes all the way around. Like it's just a, it's not an actual line, but like it, it lines off at the top of the hand. Now, I don't like to do that because if the client ever goes onto their hand and wants their hand tattooing, then you have minimized the amount of room that you have got to work with. What I like to do is I like to start blending downwards. So I maybe start the blend round about there and then blend, 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 blend to a very, very, very light tone. So what happens then is when it comes to working on the hand, I have not just the this area of the hand to work with, I have this area of the hand to work with. So I, I end up giving myself more room to work with but I also end up not capping off the wrist so it makes it easier to blend the hand into the arm. Same with the shoulder. I generally keep to a light tone in the general like area where the shoulder comes around like that but it's generally very light so if they ever go onto the top of the shoulder, onto their back or onto their chest, they can seamlessly transition from one to the next without making it harder on myself because I capped it off. It's one of like the biggest things that I, I can't stand. You can always tell that a shoulder was capped off, especially with like Japanese because they'll put like waves that come like around or they'll put like wind bars on that come around or something like that. And you can tell that that sleeve was capped off and then they come off the capped off onto the chest and it just, you know, it looks good, it does look good, and it just doesn't look as good as what it could have. So I do not cap off a shoulder and I do not cap off a wrist, just in case. Even if the client turns around and says that they will never go on their chest or they will never go on their hand, I still do not cap it off. I'll just shade down to the wrist a lot further and just a slightly little bit darker Again, for the same reasons, because they don't know. They really don't know what they're gonna do in five or six or seven years from now. So rule number four is leaving yourself open to extend if needed. It's just a quick rule, but it's a good one. Anyway, guys, that is all for today. I hope you have learned something. Again, just to reiterate, these are just what I like to follow. These are my like general rules rules of what I like to do when it comes to building a sleeve. But as you go on in your career, you'll find your way of doing something and your way might be better than my way. 
you may take my way and your way and combine them both to create something better. And that is what tattooing and learning to tattoo is all about. Taking this info, applying the info, and adapting the info. But guys, that is all for today. And, and I shall seize you all in the next one. Wow.